Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Naya Werewolves. Welcome back, everybody, to another standard gameplay video. Hope you guys are doing well. We are keeping with the rotation proof train. We did that yesterday as well. We played a deck that unfortunately really wasn't all that great, but I think was a really cool idea. Uh, I know we did get some comments on it saying maybe we could have played black in it and things like that, and I think you were exactly right. I think there's a lot of different directions you could take that deck, uh, which is perfectly reasonable. And so I would encourage you guys to test that out, see what you can do with it, and we'll probably do the same later on uh, this month on the channel as well. Uh, but like I said, we're going to keep with the theme of uh, trying to build rotation-proof decks. And with that in mind, I wanted to actually take a look back at werewolves. Uh, we haven't really played werewolves in quite a while. Um, and obviously, they're a really powerful archetype. We know that they're very good. However, after rotation, we are losing a number of really important things. In particular, the pathway lands but we're also losing things like Ranger's Class, which Ranger's Class is huge for the deck, allows for the aggression, allows for the big uh, level three play where you can play off the top of your deck. So there's some really interesting things there that we are losing, but I still wanna see if we can make the deck work. Uh, now, with that in mind, I did throw this list together. I have tested it twice, I have won twice, uh, and I'm really kind of liking it. Uh, it allows for very good aggressive plays uh, even still without that ranger class. So to very briefly kind of discuss as we kind of mostly know what werewolves looks like at this point, the deck doesn't build itself, but it certainly is relatively straightforward. Uh, we do have Kessig Naturalist, which is one of the biggest things we can have on turn two. This allows us to ramp. If we can flip it, it also is a lord for all of our wolves, which is fantastic. Uh, we do have the Outland Liberator. This is just going to give us a little bit of extra tech against artifacts and enchantments. We saw in yesterday's video that was actually a problem for us. We didn't really have a way to deal with them. Outland Liberator gives us the ability to do so. That's why I put it in here as a two of. Uh, one of the best payoffs for the deck is Tovalar, does allow you to draw cards, and then on that flip side, you can actually give something plus X, plus zero, and trample until the end of the turn, uh, which just gives you the ability to really finish off the game quite quickly. Uh, Brutal Cathar is really our only white card, but it does allow us the removal aspect so we can continue that aggressive push, uh, and so I do really like it there. Reckless Stormseeker, of course, a phenomenal haster, gives stuff, uh, give, gives other things haste as well, and a little bit of a power bonus so we can get in there for some extra damage. Uh, we do have Halpak Piper as a full four of. I actually really like this deck, uh, or this card, excuse me. One, it can't be countered, which I think is quite good, but also uh, it does give you a way to, to dump some of the higher mana value creatures onto the board if you need to. Uh, and then, of course, on the backside, you actually get to do a little bit more. We do have Arlen in here as a two of. This is just going to be able to spit out more and more of those wolves, which is, of course, important. We've got the Arsonist as a two of. This is a Menace Haster. It deals damage on attacking. It's a really good creature, again, to clear the board and clear the way so we can continue the onslaught. And then I actually have a one of Caretaker and a one of Huntmaster here, mostly to capitalize on that Piper. Uh, but I kind of just wanted to try them out as well. I know they're both good cards, but I wanted to see what we could do with them. Uh, as far as some other little pieces in the deck, uh, while they are not werewolves, I do have the partners in here. This is going to allow us to kind of power ourselves out of a board st uh, a board um, stall position where we need to throw some counters on some stuff and then hopefully get in for a little bit more damage. So I do actually really appreciate having this in here. It works great with the Stormseeker as well. Uh, we do also have two of the Howling Moons. This is actually a card that I don't believe I've ever played in the Wolves deck, and I'm kind of just curious to see if it works. Uh, I I'm running it as a two-up just to test it, uh, but it's a nice little card here. It does kind of punish a lot of decks right now, in particular the like Azorius um, uh, protection like Delver style deck and things like that. Uh, and so I'm actually kind of curious to see if this actually becomes a huge payoff. May not, but that's why we're trying it. Uh, and then in the one drop slot, we have two play with fires just as a way flexible burn always really important It also can give us that scry uh, and then Tamiya is safekeeping uh, Just to protect something I think that's an important piece of this puzzle because there are a lot of sweepers There are a lot of things that can finish the game very quickly and s just get rid of the board We need to be able to keep something around so that way we can have a big payoff the following turn uh, This also gains life of course as well, which is nice. Um 
I did mention the pathway lands are, of course, not in the deck because we are making this rotation proof. I think that presents quite a number of challenges for the mana base. Uh, so we did have to go with the full four garden, the farmland, and the veil, which does lead to the potential for tapped lands early on. Uh, the skew might also be just a bit off. Uh, we might be a little too heavy in white because I don't think we need too much of it. Uh, but it is there for us just so we can guarantee or at least hopefully guarantee a turn three Brutal Cathar that was pretty important for the deck, which is why I built it the way I did. A lot of stuff to talk about here and a lot of stuff to play around with, but we're going to jump right in. We're going to kind of talk about it as we go, see what the faults are, see what the benefits are, and see if we can actually get some wins with it and hopefully have a fun time. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Also, you might be wondering why I don't have my glasses on anymore. Uh, I took them off and realized they were actually broken. Uh, and so here we are. Um, how do we feel about this hand? I don't love it. Uh, the fact that we have a bunch of four drops is not great. I think I mulligan that uh, as much as I don't want to. And I think this is a much more reasonable hand. Um, and honestly, I think it might be this. Uh, as much as I don't want to toss that back, we have a nice one, two, into three. Uh, and so I think we'll be able to kind of fill things out as we go along here. Um, with seeing this start, I'm actually going to lead with the uh, mountain here. This just opens up the play with fire uh, option, which may not be worth it, but it certainly is going to be helpful in, I think, this scenario. Uh, because we can just go ahead and get rid of this before they even really have the opportunity to do much about it. Uh, and I think that that's okay. Let's go ahead and drop the Outland Liberator. This does give us an out for killing the Ranger class here and just getting it off the field, which is phenomenal. We also do have our third land, so of course we can just play Tovalar next turn and get some attacks in. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm optimistic, we'll say. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, we've got options. I think we end up just playing the Tovalar, is my guess. Um, yeah. I don't love it, but we kind of just want to flip this so when we attack, we can actually kill the Ranger class. I know that's getting a bit greedy, uh, but I think we need to commit more to the board first and then kind of let them do their thing. They are going to get an attack in, of course, here, which is not ideal, but it's okay. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw this down. Um, now the question is, do we want to trade out potentially here? I'm actually going to offer this. Um, so the reason being, I don't want to give them extra lands in particular right now. And this also is just a really good, uh, takeout for them. This also gives us the flip so we can see how things go this turn. Um, I'm not super optimistic, but we do have this available that we can just blow this up at any point at this point. Uh, the reason I wanted to kill that Kodama, by the way, is most importantly, uh, if they get extra lands with this, ah, oh man, they have another one. Uh, if they were to get extra lands, um, that would have been a much bigger problem. Uh, so I think we're gonna end up just passing here. We know um, we can probably get the attack in and trade off maybe we'll see uh i am gonna go ahead and cycle this garden uh unfortunately it's another land don't love that uh but okay so they are gonna get a land here we know that but that's fine ish um and here we go this is a good card to have all right so let's get this down uh let's move into attacks we'll throw this at them uh, and we get to blow up that ranger class, which is great. Uh, obviously this isn't the easiest attack to make because they also have a 5-5 and they're potentially going to transform it this turn into an 8-8, <laughs> which is not good. But I think we kind of just have to let that ride. Um, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think we have to take it. Uh, they do get to draw quite a number of cards here as well, which I don't love. But uh, I think that's just kind of the, uh, the reality of where we're at, unfortunately. Uh, we did draw quite a number of lands this game as well, unfortunately, which is obviously not ideal, uh, but there's not much you can do about that. And, I mean, truthfully, I think we just lose, right? Uh, they've got a big trampler that they will be able to transform if they would like. Uh, we can do this, but, I mean, it really doesn't help very much, and, yeah, I think, uh, I think they definitely have it. <laughs> um, yep. 
So I'm gonna good game them here. They definitely have us. That's okay. Unfortunately, again, we hit a lot of lands there. Uh, and surprisingly, I'll be honest, I don't tech out for mono green very often, but it seems to be kind of making a comeback. It's a little interesting, but regardless, let's go ahead, let's jump into game two. Check out this month's Patreon rewards, celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. How do we feel about this hand? Uh, again, unfortunately not great. Um, part of me wants to keep it on speculation that we'll draw any land, because uh, any land does give us the opportunity for the Stormseeker or the Cathar. Uh, I'm going to try it. Screw it. Let's, let's give it a shot, guys. I'm not optimistic. This is a bad keep in general. Uh, would highly recommend throwing this back normally, but we're having fun today. Uh, we are going to lead with the red because it does open up the naturalist opportunity. Um, but, unfortunately, we didn't get it. Uh, so, fingers crossed. <laughs> we might get an extra game in if this one goes so quickly. Uh, that was just a bad keep, though. We knew that was a bad keep, so that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, good. Um... Actually, I don't know what the... I guess it's probably the Howling Moon. Um, as good as that card can be against this deck, because they're probably going to try and double up a lot, uh, I feel like this is just probably better. Yeah, we're... <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Super bad keep. Uh, Alright, they get their land down. Oh, no. Oh no, I was about to just concede. Uh, this is so bad. Why did we keep? Why did we keep? That was such a mistake. It's fine. Everything's fine. All right. Uh, cool. <laughs> I'm assuming this gets countered. Um, they probably have a counter, but uh, maybe not. All right, so we'll try and do this, but of course I'm sure they have a way of dealing with it, uh, which is fine. Yep. Awesome. Uh, and it does, so they played it perfectly as well, so one thing to note, uh, if you exile this, I believe it resets the counters on it, I might be incorrect in saying that, but they they didn't wait for that to be the case, uh, which was very smart on their end. Cool. I'm gonna good game them, <laughs> we're just gonna move right along, let's jump into game three. <laughs> Alright guys, let's see if we can do a little better this time. Man, we are not getting good starts though. Uh, I... I'm gonna just keep this because we have the lands uh, and hopefully we can do something with it. We will see. Man, all the lands. We really are drawing a lot of lands. That's kind of frustrating, but it's okay. Uh, let's throw a farmland out again, just because we don't really have a third or a, a turn two option here. I did play the Rockfall Veil on purpose because if we drew the Naturalist, that would have been an open play for us with the forest in our hand. So that was, you know, important to note. Um, interesting, okay. Uh, with that in mind, let's do this. Do we go ahead and Brutal Cathar, or do we just pass? I think we pass. Um, so the reason being in particular, if they have a reanimation option with, uh, the Lorehold, Villamachus, whatever his name is, this guy, uh, we do kind of want to make sure that we can answer it uh and if they just go for it here they probably won't have enough mana to do that much with it and we can just brutal cathar which we will uh now invoke justice is ridiculously good because it does make it a lot more powerful but uh wow okay man uh sure <laughs> we are just getting annihilated guys uh it's fine everything's fine all right there's the naturalist. Um, I mean, we literally like have to do this uh, to even have any vague hope of not losing the game. So we'll go ahead and do it, but they're gonna have a burn spell, <laughs> I have to imagine. Um, <clears throat> all right. Or just that, cool. All right, we're conceding, yeah! <laughs> let's go for a game four, guys. Let's hope for a little better. It's only been like 10 minutes, so uh, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are for game number four. This actually is a relatively good hand, so I'm perfectly happy to keep this. Uh, we've got a beautiful two into really two very good three drops. So at this point, it's just a matter of can we curve out and can we deal with what they're doing? Um, this is really the first hand that we have seen that I feel like has a vague hope of, 
doing anything. Um, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, interesting, they did not go for really anything. Um, I will play the Liberator. Uh, fully expecting that they'll probably have a removal spell for it, but uh, it is something that comes down and they're going to need to do something about it, I think, at some point. Uh, usually these decks tend to run like a Fable. Uh, oh, okay. Bardu. Very intrigued by this. Uh, very good. All right. I will play the Stormseeker. Uh, just because I do kind of want to max out the damage output that we can have here. Uh, they're obviously a game life deck, and so any amount of uh, damage is going to help neutralize a little bit of this. Let's go ahead and give this haste, uh, and we get in for 8, which is pretty good. It resets them and gets them down to 18, which is nice. So all that life gain that they did get out of these two revitalizes, we've kind of taken care of. Fully expect they will have a way to answer the board, though. Uh, would not be surprised at all, so uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Uh, nothing so far. So, is this just the same style, like, reanimator deck that we saw last game? Uh, very easily could be. Alright, so this is going to come down on Nightbound, so I think we just go ahead and play it. Um, and then give it that, uh, plus two and haste. Just get in for as much as we can. I mean, this is exactly, like, what we want, uh, <laughs> is to, to just neutralize as much as we can of their life total uh, as quickly as possible and so this is great uh, this is what we wanted whether or not this really pans out or not we'll see but uh, I mean at least we have a shot we've got them down to seven I do like the added bonus of just being able to kill treasure tokens with this uh, that's certainly kind of a nice little tactic um, okay so I think I'm going to go ahead and do this, um, just because I want the scry. I did not want the land on top, so I'm happy we did that. That would have been quite bad. It would have been a cycle land, but it's still not really all that helpful. And that's very good. So let's go ahead and drop this. This does come in and give ourselves a little extra. I think it's just going to be this, uh, because it does the maximum amount of damage right away so this is just a lethal threat uh that they're gonna have to be able to deal with if they can't we might be okay we'll see um i do really love this howler i think this card is just so good all right uh so this is just bombardment i assume it's mardu bombardment um playing the burn down the house along with a cathartic i mean there's a lot here that signifies that so i'm assuming i know but i think that that's probably correct um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go for this. We do have the uh, Howling Moon that at some point would actually be really good against Bombardment, but I think we just go for the win, and there we go, guys. We get, we finally got it. <laughs> We're going to go for another one. We have time. Uh, we've got plenty of time, so let's go ahead. Let's do one final game. All right, guys, here we are for our very last game. It's going to have to be our last game. Uh, oof. Um, if we get a red source, we're good. If we get any land, we've got Howling Moon. Look, we tried it once before and it didn't work. I believe in us this time. <laughs> this is such a bad keep. Uh, we're we're just being silly today, guys. I'll be honest. Um, and that's fine. This uh this month has been or will probably continue to be a bit of a drag in the sense that you know it's. We're, we're coming up on rotation time. We don't really have a lot to, to explore at this point. And so this is really just going to be the opportunity for us to try some stuff out, see what we can do, and uh, hopefully have some fun. And I, I mean, I like this. It's fun. That's not super good. Um, so we just attack in. We do have the Tamiya's safekeeping available, so that is actually kind of helpful. Um, just because if they try and remove this, at least we have something we can do. Um, but a land would be really helpful. <laughs> I feel like we're going really back and forth between we either have a lot of land or we have no land at all, and that's a really annoying place to be. All right. Don't love seeing that. Oh, come on. Why? Gosh darn it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we just get rid of a naturalist. I don't know. Ugh. We're just getting 
getting hosed, guys. It's okay, it happens, but ugh, it's very frustrating. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, I'm happy we have the safekeeping at least. Uh, so they are going to get in for the attack, of course. That's fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ugh. This is so bad. <laughs> Please give me a land. Alright. And it's a green land. I mean, it's better than nothing, but it's really not that good. So the problem here is, I mean, the only thing we can really play is the mine because we have, or the moon, excuse me, because we don't have a red source. Ugh. Do we just give up? Probably. <sighs> Might as well go ahead and do this because the reality is uh, they're going to tap these lands anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, we're... Oh, cool. Alright, I'm conceding. Let's talk about this. <laughs> All right, guys, so rotation proof Naya werewolves, uh, rough run, very rough run. Um, what I will say, a lot of that was down to bad keeps. <laughs> I know at least two of the games were down to bad keeps. They were, they were hands we should have mulliganed. So honestly, that was on me. That was not necessarily on the deck. That being said, there are some issues with the deck that I think we can easily point out. Uh, A, Anytime you're going to try a rotation proof deck prior to the actual rotation, you're going to run into problems with efficiency, lack of cards like Ranger class, which would have obviously been just in general a really nice card to have. I mean, you're going to miss those things. And so naturally the deck is going to be powered down to what we're expecting of the deck uh, in normal terms right now. So uh, with that being said, in practice, this deck went super well. Uh, I was able to snag some wins. It honestly was a really easy play pattern because it's werewolves, so it was really just threat after threat after threat. Uh, and if they swept, you generally could rebuild okay. Uh, and so, truthfully, I'm a little surprised at how bad these games were. That being said, that's just the reality of what it is, and maybe I need to tool it out different, maybe I need to do something different, and that's totally fine too. Uh, that being said, whatever suggestions you guys have for this, I would love to hear. Leave them in the comment section. Uh, I, I do want to keep it rotation proof because I want to see what we can build, uh, knowing that, you know, the meta is about to shift and all that stuff. Uh, and so I kind of wanted to lay the groundwork for that and then see where it lands once rotation actually happens. So we'll give it a shot maybe after uh, Dominaria United drops, but for the time being, that's going to be it. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow.